just a little bit of these and then uh, let me see what I got got to close everything so I, so I don't miss a mistake where I was at so uh, this is just a little bit about uh, King Philip now um, trying to see the part that uh because the, the other website is is the one but I, I was thinking about using this one I, I just wanted to okay I, I'll read the other one but this, this part right here where it says um, this war became one of the costly con confrontations uh, in colonial history, it is believed that more than half of the 90 settlements in the region had been attacked and a dozen destroyed while Indian villages were massacred and tribes decimated. When it was over, members of the Wampanoag, Nimuk, and Narragansett tribes were gathered and sold into slavery. Those who escaped fled from tribe to tribe as each, in turn, was destroyed. All right, so um, yeah, so yeah, that's what I, I wanted to show. So yeah, you had all three of those tribes and the Pinqua as well that were shipped into slavery. So all of them was all the, those tribes were shipped into slavery. All right, so I'll, I'll read it from this one. It says, uh, "Do American Indians celebrate Thanksgiving?" So wanted to go a little bit into King Philip and a, a little bit more like basically it's talking about kind of like what we read earlier um, yeah what we read earlier in regards to what is being taught in the school systems but so I'll just start right here uh, it says let's begin with Squanto a Potsix one of more than 50 tribes who formed the Wampanoag Confederacy. Around 1614, when he was perhaps 30, Squanto was kidnapped along with others of his people and taken across the Atlantic Ocean to Malaga, Spain. Okay, so during the 1600s, he was taken to Malaga, Spain. So another cut for, well, as I showed in the other, for anybody that wouldn't, even recognize that we we were shipped to uh we weren't uh we were shipped you know to the uh the other side of the the earth okay or uh to spain okay but um it says where they were sold into slavery monks in spain brought squanto shared their faith with them and made it possible for him to find his way to england in 1615 in england he worked for a shipbuilder john stanley and became proficient in English. In 1619, Squanto returned to his homeland by joining an exploring expedition along the New England coast. He arrived at the village where he has been raised. All his family and the rest of his tribe had been exterminated by a uh, devastating plague. Cause so, yeah, when he came back, uh, that's what he found. What about the pilgrims, separatists who fl uh, fled from England to Holland seeking to escape religious persecution by English authorities and who later booked passage to North America are now called pilgrims, though America Americans did not widely use the term until the 1870s. In November, in November 1620, the Mayflower dropped anchor in present-day Providence Town Harbor after exploring the coast for a few weeks the pilgrims uh, landed and began uh, building a permanent s settlement on the ruins of Squanto uh, Patuk's village now renamed New Plymouth within the first year half of the 102 pilgrims who set out from Europe on a Mayfire had perished in desperation the pilgrims initially survived by eating corn from abandoned fields, raiding villages for store food and seed and robbing graves at corn hills. So, yeah, the, the so-called white man didn't know what to do. Okay, so he didn't, uh, 
you know, he basically you could say he went on his his cave like uh you know, I guess um ways. You know what I'm saying? Alright, so uh yeah, pretty pretty much like y'all can uh like I said I already named. So if y'all wanna read it on your own, uh I just wanted to read a little bit about King Philip um but showing you that he went uh he went to he had went into slavery to Spain. Alright. And um Yeah, read this. Squanto died in 1622, but Massasoit outlived the era of relative peace in colonial New England. On May 26, 1637, near the present-day Mystique River in Connecticut, while the warriors were away, an, estimate, an estimated 400 to 700 Pequot women, uh, children, and old men. So, yeah, I mean, like we, like we just read. Um, and then, like you know, like I said, the scriptures they they won't have show favor uh, a nation with fierce countenance. Okay, uh, were massacred and burned by combined forces of the Plymouth, Massachusetts Bay, and Saybrook colonies and Narragansett and uh, Mohegan Me allies. Uh, colonial authorities found justification to kill most of the Pequot men and enslave. Uh, the captured women and their children. Pinkwa slave. So it says Pinkwa slaves were sent to Bermuda and the West Indies. Okay, so Pinkwa slaves were sent to Bermuda and the West Indies. So again, I mean, for for all y'all yeah, that that talk all all of this stuff about Negro only and Negro, yeah, all these places that Indians were shipped. When you look at these places, it's nothing but black people. Okay, so um, so-called black people, all right, and then, and then no, they the Indians wasn't killed off to uh, where to an extinction where it's just no one there, uh, and then all you know they just bring a whole bunch of people from Africa. That's not that's not true. Okay, so again, all a lot of people that was basically just sent into slavery. Or, or, yeah, prisoners of war. All right. So, um, it says in 1975, the official number of Pequot people living in Connecticut was 21. Uh, similar declines in native populations took place throughout New England as an estimated 300,000 Indians died by violence. Even more were displaced in New England over a few decades. Okay. So, um, Yeah, so that, that was a point. Uh, just another point of... Uh, okay, so we can get into now the slavery aspect. Um, okay, so we can get into the slavery aspect of these tribes, and then I'm going to close it out with, uh, you know, how they was classified as Negro and just show you all some images. All right, so uh, bear with me. Alright, so this is Wampanoag in Bermuda. Okay, so we know that uh, we know that Bermuda is in you know the Caribbean. Okay, so um, and it, it was a sovereign state of um, you know British. Okay, the British Overseas Territory. All right, so um, you know how most of the people there black, cause so I mean you know what I'm saying. So again, everyone's gonna say that all these people, you know, the norm, like I said, is gonna be that all these people were um, Africans. Okay, but that's not true. Okay, but it says uh, beginning around 1616, Wampanoag, Pinquad, Narragansett, Cherokees. Mexicans, Carib, Arawaks, and Indians from Central and South America were sold into in Bermuda. Okay, and I uh, I didn't show, but I have a source 
how again with even even with the Mayans, Mayans were shipped to Jamaica as well. So you had a lot of uh, shipping of indigenous people to you know the, the islands. Okay, so it says in two thousand nine, Tallhawk, which that's that's him right here. But um, matter of fact, my I have another or. Uh, the guy right right here, tall this is tall heart. Okay. Okay. Uh, this this is him. Which this this is one of the images I was gonna show, but this is tall heart. And this is uh St. Clair or Brinky Brinky Tucker. Uh, which is yeah Wampanoag and Bermuda this this is what I'm, I'm reading right now but um, it says uh, and a delegation of Wampanoag Indians and Massatucket Pinquas went in search of their people from the slavery era they traveled to St. David's Island in Bermuda there, there they met a small clan claiming to be descended from New England Indian slaves shipped to the island centuries ago. Wyndon's group was convinced it was true when they saw uh, the faces, dances, and ceremonies of the St. David's Indians. I was struck by how much they looked like us, said Michael J. Thomas, a Massantucket tribal leader. Okay, a matter of fact, since we're there, let me show you who that was. Okay, bam. So this is Michael uh, Michael J. Thomas. Okay, former, as you see right here, it says former chairman of the Massantucket Pequot Tribal Nation in Ken uh, Connecticut. Okay, uh, so what what would he be classified? <laughs> you know, that, that's not even not even play games. What would he be classified into today's society? Okay. Especially he got his hair cut. He, you know, what I'm saying he not, he don't, he don't have like his long, uh, his hair grown out. But you know, as his hair is cut, what would he be classified? You know, what I'm saying you see him on the street. Okay, he would be classified as a Negro, or you, you might, yeah, would even say he would be a so-called African American unless he he specified he was from a, a place in the islands. Okay, so. Uh, that's who so the, him and and right here tall heart or tall oak went to look for Indians uh, from the slave that were sold into slavery and they went to Bermuda okay so it says according to local legend the wife and son of King Philip might have been among those on St. David's after the king's death his wife wanted to uh, Nusuk uh, is said to have married an African. This kept alive the uh, genealogical line with the Indians in New England. Okay, and like I showed in my my last video, how even on the the plantation you had Indians and so-called Africans, which all of them were Israel. Okay, Southern Northern Kingdom, but the slave master couldn't tell the difference. Okay, so it wasn't. Like it was African again, the, the the wrong narrative that Africans were sleeping, like slept with Mongoloid Indians, and uh, as if as as if the Mongoloid Indians is the standard of what a, a Indian is. Okay, so uh, a Mongoloid Indian. Matter of fact, let me just. So y'all, I can make it plain. Alright, uh matter of fact, look look what is this right here? I don't even look at that. See look look at this brother right here. Look at this. Okay. <laughs> like I, I was just I was just uh say like, you know, the Asian features, but yeah, this is the real Indian right here. All right, but I, I can't. I got sidetracked, but I, I wanted to look at that. So, yeah. Okay, so, like, 
people thinking, yeah, these these right here is the real Indian. Knowing damn well that's that's uh, a lot of Eurasian, Asian, Mongol, so on and so forth. Which again, they we were here first. The Mongoloids came. We we did some mixing with them, warring with them. Then the so-called white man came. We mixed with him, okay, and war with them, okay. And that's kind of like uh, why when I'm gonna show some of these people, that's why. Yeah, some are mixed, but again, you can see the mulatto, you can see the Negro still with them. Like, you can't see no Negro in her right here. You can't see, that's my point. Like, no matter how somebody look, again, if they go back to Negroes, because a lot of that, that that's a broad term, Negro or Indian descent. It ain't talking about the guy that I just showed and then uh, some someone like this, okay, or, or like this. No. Okay, so especially, especially like I said, someone like like this that's clear uh, of Asian descent. Okay, it's been proven. It's been proven. Okay, the the main scholars, uh, um, you know, all the genetic geneticists, all of them have said that the the skulls and all of that, the first skulls was of a Negroid, so-called African. Uh, descent, you know what I'm saying, more matching them than modern modern Ameri Native Americans, okay, so, uh, yeah, again, so is, is, is Negro and Indian descent, is it, is us and this guy right here, okay, so, that, that's that what I'm talking about, so it was nothing but black, black Indians and black so-called Africans mating, so it was all black people. Okay, so um, that to make it plain, and even on top of that, I'll say that uh, it wasn't like because a lot of people think with even even amongst mixtures, okay, like people think that just everybody is is mixed or everybody was dealing with somebody else or or you know uh, mixing with everybody else as if they were they people wasn't still sleep you know staying with with their own or. Um, you know, so, so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So, not everybody was slept with a so-called African, which, like I said, is the same people. And really, a lot of so-called Africans were able to be amongst native tribes because obviously they were the same people. They knew them, so on and so forth. Okay, so, uh, but like I said, these people were already dark-skinned, black prior to a, a so-called African or, or the, the Southern Kingdom coming in, which I don't believe is just Southern Kingdom can, because like I said, you had Indians going that way, coming back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just all all mixed up. But we, we know according to Isaiah 11, Judah scattered, but all, all the tribes were scattered. Okay, because it tells you, uh, Jeremiah, that, yeah, the seed of uh, Israel that was scattered in the north countries and all the other countries where they were scattered, they'll be brought back. All right, so, um, you know, Salakia. Uh, but it says the Pequot plan to dig even further into slavery's his hidden history, Thomas said. So, again, this is what he's saying. Cause, so they're going to dig deeper into... Uh, the his the slave history. All right, so uh, let me let me go down. So it says indigenous arts, homecoming for the Indians of Bermuda, home is where the art is. All right, so I wanted to uh, let's go through this a little bit. Uh, it says what does it mean to retain cultural traditions for three fifty, three hundred and fifty years in a land far from one's original homeland how does it feel to reconnect with people from your from whom your ancestors was captured and sold into slavery how how does it feel to return to a country and people you only know through generation of family oral histories for indians on bermuda's south david island these are deep and relevant well relevant questions uh, colonial records and ship documents contain that some of the survivors of the May 26, 60, 1673 European massacre of Pinqua, Pinquas in 
uh, southeastern Connecticut were sold into uh, Bermudian slavery along with various fac factions from other uh, New England tribes. Wampanoag warriors from the 1676 King Philip's or all, uh, war were uh, also were sold as slaves. Altogether, several hundred Native Americans were sold into Bermuda slavery. These Indian slaves and their descendants remain located on uh, St. David's Island, uh, an outlet at the northern end of Bermuda. Now, as I'm saying, now when you looking at the, which I'm going to show these, these images, and you're looking at the powwows in Bermuda of the Wampanoag and these different tribes now, they don't, a lot of them is not looking like this. Okay, they looking black people. Okay, so you know I gotta keep saying that because I mean it's not I guess it's not clicking with with Israel. Okay, so they not looking like this in Bermuda. Okay, I can just damn near type in. So what I wanted to show real quick, I wanted to show uh, people in Bermuda. It's kind of kind of to go with what I was talking about. Cause I, cause I'm gonna show some pictures, but I want wanted to. It affects me directly because we live in such a small community. Like the people who's getting caught up in the gang activity and violence that we're in school with. So you know, lives are being lost, and these are people that I've known from young. So I feel like I'm always second guessing if maybe I should hang out with friends. Maybe should I consider even hanging around certain people? I feel like I have friends who are males that feel like they might be mistaken for someone else, and that that might lead them to an altercation. And, and see, like, yeah, it, uh, this is off, kind of off topic, but basically, even th this, I just pop. Just wanted to show y'all something, but yeah, the violence in Bermuda, and it yeah, black basically black on black crime going back to you know the curses, you know what I'm saying. So um, in the hospital, but, ending up getting arrested, things like that. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, I don't know what to do. I just want to wonder, like, why can't we go to the and you see that like I was saying Negro is vest so you see you got light skin kind of dark skin hair like a little bit more curly because uh, she, she darker all right, so that's kind of what I wanted to show. So back to, uh, okay, so I just wanted to show that uh, just some of the people there, which I'm gonna I'm gonna show some people from the, um, you know, the powwows, um, you know, that are descendants of these tribes. Um, so I said, um, all together, uh, these these Indian slaves and their descendants remain. Uh, or so, like it. so I'm, I'm right here. That re uh, relative isolation lasted until the 1930s when a bridge was uh, constructed connecting St. David's Island with the rest of Bermuda. Although there was intermarriage and cohabitation with African slaves, European colonists, and imported Carib Indians, these descendants of New England tribes passed on oral uh, uh, so like oral stories that connect five uh, state uh, St. David's family stories about an Indian slave woman named Susanna who claimed to be the granddaughter of King Philip and traditions of chanting and drumming at a hillside location called Dark Bottom. After the 1834 emancipation, uh, most former slaves stayed on St. David, David's and continue to intermarry with each other. Okay, so uh, 
you know, that's that's what happened. So it says most of the St. David's Islanders today are of mixed blood, says St. Clair Tucker, or Brinky as he prefers to be called. Uh, one of the founding members of the St. David Island Indian community. Cause so he, cause he says every everyone is is mixed blood, which yeah, you looking at a lot of the tribes now, which like I said, some are a lot are mulatto, but prior to all of that, again, still during that time, like I'm, I'm gonna show that the New Englanders called the people of there that they came across, uh, they called them swarthy, black amores, so on and so forth. So it wasn't like. You know, they was like I like I showed y'all images. It wasn't Mongoloid Indians, and you know, so and then all of a sudden, they, so they it was Mongoloid Indians, and then now they became black. Like no, all right. So um, let me see. So it says uh, the first Indian slave arrived on our shores in 1616, and for the next 200 years. The English developed a very profitable slave trade with Africans and Native Americans. Documents prepared by the English indicate that Pinquas, Wampanoags, uh, Narragansett, Cherokee, Mihogans, Ch uh, Carib, Arawaks, and Indians from Central and South America were sold here. The only trading port was in St. George's, about 150 yards from St. David's. All right, so um, let me see. I wanted to get another part with um, y'all can read that on your own, but so actually, this is what I wanted. Uh, Let me just get to the point. Okay, so it says, although uh, Mr. Turk Tucker was curious about his family, uh, his family heritage as a child, he really didn't start looking into it in any great detail until he was an adult. During his research, he learned that Native American captives were bought, brought to Bermuda in the late 1600s and early 1700s to be sold as slaves. They were often captives from various wars fought between Euro Europeans and Native Americans. Okay, so all of this tying in to what we brought out with Thanksgiving and the wars uh, that like King Philip's War, the Pinquat War, things like that. All right, so uh, they were sold in the square in St. George Mr. Tucker said, although many were purchased by residents of St. George, people from all over Bermuda would also purchase them. So Bermudians don't have don't have to have roots in St. David's to have Native American ancestry. Okay, so it says, Mr. Tucker. Uh, it's a lot. Okay, so it says, uh, Mr. Tucker found, uh, Mr. Tucker found during genealogy research that one of his great grandmothers, born in the 1700, was listed as a free colored woman. Okay, so one of his lines was listed as a free colored woman, which meant Indian or partly Indian. So which, so a free, so it said. 1700s was listed as a free colored woman which meant Indian or partly Indian in census records from the 1700s okay so I mean which meant Indian or partly Indian so whether they were full Indian or half half Indian you know however you want to take it the person was called free uh, color a free colored Okay, and who else? Who else? Again, so-called African Americans was called free colored, colored things like that. So, again, like I'm saying, a lot of African Americans that are saying they came from Africa, a lot don't even know, you know, if they are from from Africa and from though, even though a lot have came 
uh, you know, to from Africa, which it wasn't as much as a lot of people are, like like they the numbers basically are as much of the people coming from Africa, you know, as as what they make it seem. But my point is to say that a lot of that's why a lot of us don't even have records of us coming from Africa because most likely we was we was already uh, in America. Okay, so uh, but in that aspect. Again, the free colored woman, okay, which meant Indian. And in my last video, I showed that Negro was primarily primarily meant uh, someone that was Indian. All right, so just just to bring that out again, but it says uh, Mr. Tucker does not know her tribe as this was not recorded. There was about nine different tribes enslaved in Bermuda, so he could have been from any of Wampanoag, Pinqua. You know any of those any of those tribes, all right. So um, okay, so that that's kind of what I wanted to show. I wanted to show y'all that all these tribes were sold into slavery in in Bermuda. Okay, now and I just showed again. I just showed, well, I'm gonna show the the uh, the powwow, uh, which even even the word powwow. Is Narragansett in origin? So we and I'm gonna show you who the Narragansett were. So again, people talking about culture vultures and all type of, but you you these people keeping a powwow that was created by black people, okay? Like a pow the, the term powwow going back to the Narragansett language, okay? And I and I have some sources that uh, you know they were saying uh, their their language is Hebrew, okay? So I might I might do that because uh, you know I, I'm not gonna just forcefully teach something, you know, I, I want to have my facts straight, you know what I'm saying, but, um, but my point is that even the word powwow, which, matter of fact, I can show y'all real quick, uh, powwow is, uh, it comes from the, the Narragansett, okay, so it said, the word powwow is derived from the Narragansett word powwow, meaning spiritual leader. Okay, so the Narragansett, we gonna like I said, we gonna show who the Nar the, the Narragansett were. Okay, so um, but I wanted to show how yeah Indians being shipped to Bermuda, but let's let's find out if that was the only place where where the the Pinqua and and everybody and Wampanoag uh, were sent in slavery. Okay, so um, matter of fact, I'll say that one for last. Um, Okay, so let me. So this is uh, Native Village Youth Education News. Um, it says Ver the first slaves by Rick Green. Okay, and again, here's the map showing y'all the uh, you know where everybody was stationed. Okay, and it's showing you uh, yeah, just showing you where the the different tribes was at 1600s. All right, so it says. Um, it says Connecticut in May of 1637 Puritans massacred up to 700 and th that word Puritan because so these, these damn uh, these damn uh, let me see it's a lot yeah the Protestant English Protestant okay Okay, so there, all these Protestant, y'all Protestants and all of that, you know, it said Puritans massa massacred up to 700 Pinquas in a single hour near today's uh, Mystique, Connecticut, which, yeah, we, we dealt with and we uh, we showed. Okay, uh, it says a group, matter of fact, I'm going I'm to drop down. Um, it says a group, perhaps 17, and mostly children, were thought to have been exported as slaves. Others were given to soldiers as wartime booty. This this began a dark century in American history, the New England Indian slave trade. Like many uh, Indian slaves sent from America, there is little recorded of what happened to them. Okay, so, so a lot. So, uh... It says there are a lot 
of things that people in America don't have any idea about, said Everett Tallhawk Whedon, Whedon, who has Pinkwa and Wampanoag ancestors, which is him right here. Okay, history has been sanitized. sanitized. But the time the, the Treaty of Ho uh, Hartford ended the war in September, the English had killed or enslaved more than 1,500 Pinkwa men women and children by the time King Philip's wars, war began. Indian slaves from many tribes were a common sight across southern New England. By 1676, captives from King Philip's wars, war were filling the New England cities, further frightening the English. Uh, most Indian exported out of uh, New England were from Massachusetts, whose town suffered the most from Indian attacks. Colonialists uh, considered these wars as civilized English against the savage natives. So that's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's what the so-called white man, you know, he 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 deemed us savage, but he's he's the damn beast. Okay, so and and then on top of that, he's claiming he's God fearing, and, and stuff like that. Okay, but yeah, he's he's passing homosexual laws. Okay, vow, vow laws that are against the most high. Okay, but he, he's constantly trying to call us savage. Okay, but it says, but a, a note left by Nimuk Indians, which were which were also a, 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 a tri tribes that were black. Okay, and I, I got pictures of the Nimuk Indians as well. But it says, reveals much about the time. We have nothing but our lives to lose, but thou... Uh, though thou has many fair houses and cattle and much good things, okay. As the seventeen hundred, as the seventeenth century, I keep mixing hundreds and century, but it says as the seventeenth century wore on, uh, New England colonists soon outnumbered natives by about two to one. By the end of the sixteen hundreds, there were probably thousands of Indian slaves. Indians often came to public auctions tied neck to neck. Okay, tied neck to neck, they sold for half of what an African might bring. At times, there were so many captured Indians that a few bristles of corn or a hundred pounds of wool served as payment. Slaves bound for uh, slaves bound for slave markets in Europe, Africa, the Caribbean, and elsewhere were packed tightly into ships. Okay, so yes, yes, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Yes, it did happen to indigenous people. But again, like I say, you put in the wrong face on, on, on these people. Okay, because again, I showed that they was classified as Negro. And I just showed y'all images of your Asians. How, how are they classified as Negro? Okay, and the images and the paintings and the maps that I brought out in the last video... Then, then people, why, why they not being classified as Negro now? You know what I'm saying? They not class being class free colored person colored, uh, anything. So yeah, you, even men, yeah, trying to act like uh, it was oh it wasn't Negro like like an African like the phenotype, but that's false because I got plenty of images and I got plenty of sources that will say that they had, uh yeah their complexion Negro like. Uh, the hair texture was coarse, so yeah. It, what is an Indian? Okay, because it, it ain't it ain't what you see on on your TV right now. That's for damn sure. Okay, so an Indian is not just someone with straight hair, and because again, you we can have that texture by because a lot of the Indians use bear grease. Okay, and and shoot, what 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 are we using now today to? To straighten hair and to uh, do do all type of stuff to our hair, we using all type of grease and, and things for our hair. So y'all y'all gotta understand this, all right? So um, you know, so Deuteronomy two things: Deuteronomy twenty eight verses uh, forty eight. Okay, it says, "Thou therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Most High shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst." And in nakedness and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So it told you that the Indians would came neck to neck, or or they was coming. Yeah, uh, Salakia. If I go back to it, 
uh, it said, it said tie, yeah, tied neck to neck. All right, and then yeah, the point slaves bound from slave markets in Europe, Africa, because I gotta keep putting that Africa in your face because it's the images we showed earlier are those the people that were shipped to Africa. Okay, so no, and the Caribbean, like I said, it wasn't how you had a whole bunch of mongoloid looking Indians uh, and then all of a sudden they was killed off and then the land is now polluted by nothing but Africans no that's not what happened alright so uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68 we know this and the most I shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye, there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you or redeem you okay so uh, yeah so it said some Indians I'm going to drop down so it says some Indians were sold as in, endangered servants to be freed at 24 others were bound uh, for infinite, uh, infinite periods okay children sold as indentured servants had to serve 10 years However, if they got into trouble with Puritan courts, they serve longer terms. All right, so um, it says Almond W. Luber in his 1913 book, Indian Slavery and Colonial Times, writes the general court appointed uh, certain persons in each uh, county to receive and dis 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 uh, distribute uh, these Indian children. Uh, proportionately and to see that they were sold to good families slavery helped dispose of war captives and make profits for greedy traders and filled the high demand for labor Indian slavery lasted well into the 1700s when the practice faded because so many Indians had been eliminated and because African slaves were more were more in demand which again like I said a lot of that is is false because uh, they they were still being uh, in, in slavery. Because uh, that that's the narrative that, that again that's another narrative. Oh, that they was weak and they had to bring the like no that's that's a, a narrative to keep people thinking you know of of um, you know just to lie about who who's the real indigenous and things like that. So, um, but yeah, if y'all do more research, you would know that. Uh, it Indian slavery did not stop during the 1700s. All right, so um, so this is another source, and then uh, I'm gonna go to what I was talking about. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to just kind of go through this. Uh, it says and kind of it's mainly the slavery part. I'm trying to uh, get y'all with, but it says uh, it says in early January, and this is the source. Why shall we have peace to be made slaves? Indian surrenders during and after King Philip uh, War. It says in in early January 1676, during the height of King Philip's War in New England. A colonial magistrate sent two Christianized Indians into enemy territory as spies. And in the book that I showed you, uh, or it's uh, the history of, uh, I believe it's Colonial Brazil, showed how they would take an Indian, you know, after they converted him, and then they would, uh, yeah, push him to the other Indians to try to get... Uh, you know, basically, they would, they would, like it says, they would use him as spies, or they would try to get him to have the other people, uh, other Indians converted. All right, but it says the war had dragged on for more than a half a year, and both sides were tired and possibly ready for peace. Okay, in particular, the English magistrates wanted these spies to suggest to any enemy native groups that possibility that the possibility of peace and submission to the English to gauge their openness to such an arrangement. According, accordingly, Christian Indians, James uh, Quan, Quanapak, 
uh, Kuhn and Job Catterton uh, set out a dangerous month-long trek from Deer Island in the Boston Harbor West into native territory. When they returned, they were full of information regarding the provisions of the enemy Indians, their numbers, and their whereabouts. But with re regard to the question of surrender, the news did not favor the English. Quan, I'm going to just call him Quan, <laughs> but reported, reported that uh, he understood by the chief man and old men that they were uh, inclinable to have peace again with the English, but the young men who are their principal soldiers <clears throat> say we will have no peace. We are all or most of us alive yet, and the English have kindled, killed very few of us last summer. Why shall we have peace to be made slaves and either be ki uh, killed or sent uh are sent away to sea to Barbados, cause so, yeah. So obviously, yeah. What what does scripture say? You can't trust your enemy, uh, cause so, so after all of that, like we we read in in Psalms, yeah, uh, being at peace with them, okay. But yeah, destruction was in, in the sword. Matter of fact, one more time. Okay, Psalms uh, 55 and 21. The war, the words, uh, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. So yeah, the so-called white man. Yeah, but we trying to bring peace to y'all. Y'all just submit to the English, you know. But yeah, war is in their hearts. His his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. All right, so um. And then on top of that, it says, they're saying, yeah, we, we don't e either to be made slaves and either to be killed or sent away to sea to Barbados. Okay, so again, the, all these places, black people. I, <laughs> you know, I got to keep saying that, man. Black people in these places where Indians were shipped. Wasn't no mongoloids living in, in, in Barbados. Okay, and 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 because you, for instance, you have Indians like Elam, East Indians that live in places like uh, Trinidad and to, but were they the first people there? No. You have Chinese people in Jamaica. Were they the first people there? No. Okay, so that that's what you And then on top of that, like I said, I just showed that they done found skulls uh, in, in the West Indies. Okay, and, and I done showed all type of images in, in the coat of arms showing that it was the Indian or the in real indigenous people or people of color before the whitewashing of the uh, the West Indies or West Indians, to make it plain. All right, so it says, in this short report, Quan captured one of the most difficult realities of King Philip's war for native populations fighting against the English slavery, whether actual or threatened, Unlike most enslaved Af Africans who were largely unaware of their destination. So, another, like I said, like I said, you, you had, now, you had, like I said, which were both Israelites, but I'm saying that you had Indians that were shipped to Africa, came back, obviously they knew the land. But for those that were, like I said, were most likely part of the Moors, um, or the Moranos that were shipped to Africa. Then you had some that was shipped to Jamaica first, but a lot. And then you had Israel that was already West Africa that didn't. Because I brought that out in my Morano video and Ladino video that you had uh, that they didn't they didn't have understanding of Spain. Okay, so they didn't have if they didn't have understanding of Spanish or Spain, some of the Israelites that were in West Africa, how the hell did they know about the Americas and how to escape from this, the the you know so called white man? How to do things? Cause like even like I said about Harriet Tubman, how would she know how to escape and the the roads to take if she was always been an African? You know what I'm saying? So, but that's what I'm saying. So if it says right here that. Unlike most enslaved Africans who were largely unaware of their destination, so they didn't know where, where they was going. Okay, which, I mean, you know, it, it's, that's what it's saying. 
Um, but it says, when they were shipped out from the West African coast, New England Indian captives not only knew where they, they might be sent, but they often stated it outright, Barbados. Okay, so again, Barbados. Today, Barbados is a popular tourist destination with few traces of its plantation and Indian slaveholding past. Okay, plant, and, and again, the plantation, uh, which makes it difficult to imagine the kind of terror invoked just by the name of this uh, island during the colonial period. And Barbados was not the only destination. So let's see where else. The paper trail of New England natives who were enslaved and sent overseas suggests that they arrived in Barbados, Bermuda, which we, we just went over, Jamaica, the Azores, Spain, and Tangier, and North Africa. And what I'm about to get, yeah, pretty much what, what I'm about to show y'all in a minute. But it says, among other places. Okay, so, but Barbados often stood in for being sold overseas uh, more generally. So, okay, we, we just went over to... Uh, Uh, we, we just went over to um, Barbados, I mean uh, Bermuda. So, I mean, we can clearly see the people of Barbados, okay? And I mean, yeah, you you can see Rihanna, okay, even though she wicked. But, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, you can see the people of Barbados. Look at the, the bar Barbados. You see the feathers, you know, all of that. Okay, the, the prey. So who who's primarily the people of Barbados? Black people. Okay, Negroes. Okay, so it's it's like did where did where did all these mon so if it was the real indigenous is these Mongoloid Indians you men keep showing and and or Hispanics modern days, then where where are that in Barbados? Okay. So um yeah, where where are they at? Cause we we see that yeah they were shipped over there. They wasn't just killed off, cause they they, uh, cause we even showing with the Bermuda thing how, uh, tall tall oak and and Michael Thompson, they they were saying how yeah how these people are descendants of those slaves, okay. And then uh, what what yeah uh, what we read about uh, what uh, Brinky Tucker, okay or uh, I believe the name Saint Clair Tucker, all right. So um. Okay, so y'all, y'all could. I, I just wanted to get that part, but this is a good. Uh, it, it got some, got a lot of good stuff in it, um, and this is this is the other one. So I, just for for time's sake, I will move forward to uh, the other stuff and the images. But it's but this is colonial enslavement of Native Americans, included those who surrendered to. Okay, so this uh, if y'all want to pause it, and you know get that. But it, it pretty much saying the same thing where the colonies uh, during the war, New England colonies uh, routinely shipped Native Americans as slaves to Barbados, Bermuda, Jamaica, uh, Azor, you know, as we just read. But I, I like this, this, this site, though. All right. So. Um, so let's get into. I wanted to bring this out since I was on the topic, but it said this is a consequence of the war. It says with the death of Philip and most of their leaders, the Wampanoags were nearly exterminated. Only about 400 survived the war. The Narragansett and Nimux suffered similar rates of losses and many small tribes in, in southern New England were finished. In addition, many Wampanoag were sold into slavery. Male captives were generally sold to slave traders and transported to the West Indies, Bermuda, Virginia, or the Iberian Peninsula. Okay, so we, you know, I already dealt with the West Indies and Bermuda and the Iberian Peninsula, which also uh, Africa as well. Okay, but it said Virginia. Okay, so I wanted to show y'all a little bit about Virginia. Now, uh, I don't know if no one has heard of this Pocahontas Island, but as you can see, it says, look at damn Esau there, but Pocahontas, oldest black community uh, in the United States. Now, why the hell 
would it be named Pocahontas if it had no connection to, uh, you know, Native Americans or in Indians? Okay, but yeah, they're going to give you the, uh, you know, these Mongoloid Indians as as being Pocahontas. You know what I'm saying? They're going to, yeah, they're going to have the, yeah, the Disney movie. Okay, uh... See, like, like even they put fake and real, but both, both of those is fake. Okay. See, yeah, they gonna, they gonna have it like, like this is, like you can clearly see the Asian features. Okay, but um, let me see. Okay, you, I mean, come on, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's laughable. Okay, cause I'm about to show y'all something. I'm gonna hit y'all with, with a few things. Um. Let me see, even if I, let me see, because you know they're not going to put, put the truth. But I, I have uh, something that shows that she was black. Uh, I got to go back to it. Um, but my point is to show, um, you know, the, the oldest community that's Pocahontas, that's, that's in Virginia. Okay, so let's, let's get this. So it says, in the early 1600s, John Smith, explorer of the first permanent English colony, described the indigenous people that he was at war with on the eastern shore of America in Jamestown, Virginia, the uh, Powahatan Indians, uh, the Algonquin chief, more like a devil than a man, with some 200 more as black as himself. Okay, so this is in Virginia. Cause so the Powahatan, cause uh, Poca Powahatan is uh, the father of Pocahontas. Um, show y'all. It's already kind of showing y'all. Um, So, um, the era of John Smith, um, trying to see, me. yeah, Chief Powahatan's daughter prevented her father from executing Smith, so, um, yeah, so Pocahontas, um, was the daughter of Chief Powahatan, so uh, Salaki. So it says Powahatan Indians, okay. The Algonquin chief, more than a devil, than a man, with some 200 more uh, as black as himself, okay. So showing you. So this is the Virginia Indian. It says, um, in the collection of the Virginia Historical uh, Society in Richmond is a seven foot tall wooden statue known as the Virginia Indian. It is the type formerly found in front of stores that sold cigars. So, like, if you type in cigar Indians, like, well, now nowadays it, it's changed. But the older cigar Indians, they was all showing, like, Negroes. Uh, presumably because the British knew that tobacco was indigenous to the Americas. Okay, so the, the tobacco fields, all of that. Where, uh, where it had primarily primarily a ritual use okay but just to show you so that's that's in the virginia i believe it's the virginia museum okay the the indian powahata indian all right but yeah so or right, virginia indian but we just read that the algonquin chief was black now let's look at here okay so this is a map this is virginia florida okay now you look everybody Negroes, okay, woolly hair, okay, like, and you can tell the difference, because, like, you see the woolly hair, and then, right here, I got the other close-up, she, she has, like, longer hair, he, uh, I believe this, he, they might, they might both be, uh, men, but they, they kind of have the long hair, like, because I know, again, like I said, I know somebody, grandma, my pop, you know, telling me my grandma had that, that long, uh, gray hair. Um, but basically, as you can see, Virginia, 
Okay, and all these people, Negroes. Okay, so let's show some more. So, this is, yeah, London is Virginia. This is them on the plantation. These are Africans. Okay, those are, and we could tell because look at the feathers. Okay, so, just looking. You could, you could, right here. Now, if, if those first two got you shook, this one, it should be clear. It should be clear. You, we are sh showed you images of the the feather crowns, feathers. They on the plantation. Okay, and I got more, but I, I just wanted to get to the kind of to the point. But more more plantation working on the plantation. Okay, plantation. All right, slaving, Indian slaving. Okay, here here's another one. So it says tobacco paper with advertisement for Rose Best Virginia view of black children and American Indians. So somebody might guess, oh, it says American Indians and black, but look at look at the image. All of them look the same. So who 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 would be the black children and who would be the Indians? They all look the same. Okay, so working in a tobacco plantation. Okay, well, didn't we read earlier that the reservation was a plantation? Okay, so, um, but I brought that out just to show you had Wampanoags that were sent to Virginia. So, a lot of these images, we don't know what tribe, you know, some probably of the Powahatan uh, Indians, and some, yeah, probably of, of the Wampanoags, you know, that, you know, because we already established, uh, you know, they were going to uh, slavery everywhere. Okay. So I brought this out already in the last, uh, the Israel is Negro series. So this is Turks, Moors, and Englishmen by the Bill Matar. Okay, so it says, uh, also in the same period, Britons began to meet physically with both the American Indians and the Muslims, not only in North America and North Africa, respectively, but in each other's continents. They met North American Indians in North Africa as slaves who had been carried across the Atlantic by the Spaniards. So I didn't show, yeah, you had the Spaniards that sent them out. And then it said, what does it say? And the New Englanders and sold into the Muslim markets as late as 1691. And thinking about that, this, this is off the top. Let's go to Joel real quick. Uh, Joel 3 okay because it said Muslim markets now we know even even with the other slave trade you had the Arab slave trade uh, you know so-called white man the Arabs you had Africans selling us to the uh, white man uh, e even in the book black Indians uh, I forgot what page it was but it tells you that um, that the so or like Greek mercenaries, it said Greek specifically Greek mercenaries uh, were selling. Um, I forgot what page that was, um, but uh, I'll, I'll probably because uh, I'm gonna have to do editing as well, so I'm, I'm gonna throw that in there. So uh, yeah, but it says uh, Joel. This is Joel three. And uh, three and three, it says, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Okay, because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried unto your temples my goodly things. And, uh, Salakia, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far, uh, far from their border. Okay, so, just showing you. Okay, and that, that's matching up. Okay, so it says, uh, sold into Muslim markets okay so which we would uh, equate that with being yeah the Palestine Palestinians Arabs so on and so forth okay uh, 
As late as 1691, Indians who had been captured during King Philip's War were sent to be sold into the coast lying not very remote from Egypt on the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so, and, and like I said, not very remote from Egypt. All right, so here I wanted to show real quick from the book Black Indians. Uh, this is page 53, but just this part right here. Um, showing uh, it says US troops and Greek mercenaries lashed the Seminoles left alive after the destruction of Fort Negro in 1816 back to slavery in Georgia okay so last the Seminoles left alive after the destruction of Fort Negro okay so now you see synony synonymous with the, the Seminoles Okay, but um, just going back to Joel 3, you know, just wanted to show kind of like the how it says Greek mercenaries uh, and them going back into sl uh, slavery. Okay, so linking up with uh, Joel, the third chapter. Uh, and then this was another, basically the same thing that I, that I brought up. All right. Uh, that we I just read okay so moving forward let's get uh, okay so after this I'm gonna show y'all the, the images okay uh, let me see something real quick okay so as a matter of fact so this is so them being called Negro. Now this book right here is called Natives or Narratives of New Netherland. Now New Netherland, let's look at where New Netherland was. Um, let's look at where New Netherland. Was. Okay, so New Netherland or capital New Amsterdam because I believe New Amsterdam is what uh, as be became of New York or that's the that's that's that was what it was called before it was called New York Slovakia basically so uh, New Netherland was in fact let me try to get y'all a map basically or that was the one. Okay, so it's basically over in that area where, the, where Connecticut, all of, all of that area on the East Coast, okay, um, that's, that's pretty much where it was. So, from that book, uh, this is what we find. <laughs> so, chapter 10, it says, uh, Hendrick Hudson, and again, this is from my, my uh, Instagram, so... Um, if y'all want to hit me up or whatever, y'all could do that. But it says, Hendrick Hudson, who first discovered this river and all that have since visited it, expressed their admiration of the noble trees growing there. He himself described us to us the manners and appearance of the people that he found dwelling immediately within this bay in the following terms. When I come on shore, the swarthy natives... All stood and sang in their fashion. Okay, so the swarthy natives, that's the point I wanted to get. The swarthy natives. So on the east coast, uh, showing you, um, you know, in all those places, because we can further show again Carolina Genesis. Uh, it says in 1676, after Holland transferred the region to uh, England, English colonists considered dark skinned Moors and dark skinned Nate. So the Dutch and the English, okay, uh, again, dark skinned natives, swarthy. Swarthy, the people that they met, swarthy, dark-skinned natives of New England to be indistinguishable. Okay, so dark-skinned Moors and dark-skinned natives were, were they couldn't, it, it was indistinguishable, they couldn't distinguish Salakia, they couldn't distinguish them. 
Okay, so, and we know, and I'll show images of, like I said, I show Indi Indians uh, having woolly hair, and we can see in the, the Moors, the coat of arms, that they had woolly hair as well. So it wasn't like, okay, Indian natives, it was just black and they had long, straight hair. No. Okay, so, because if they was indistinguishable with the Moors, which again, like I say, you see coat of arms and things like that, uh, with woolly hair and, and and certain features, then that's who they were saying when they came over here. Okay, so that that was pretty much the point I wanted to get. Or, or uh, it's uh, according to David McRitchie and ancient modern Britons in 1681, the Indians of New England or Moors, as they were called by the English, were described by the Quaker William Penn to be black as gypsy. So King Philip. And all these people that were shipped, because this is the during the time of King Philip, like we like we just all throughout the 1600s, uh, um, matter of fact, I probably well here we go. It's a King Philip's War, 1675 to 1676. So here it is. So 16 and 1676, English colonists, English colonists again the Thanksgiving. Considered dark-skinned Moors and dark-skinned natives, so these was these were black people. Okay, these were Negroes that the English that they fought Pequot War, all of that. The people of the New England area were black people. Point hands down, cut, cut. That's a cut. You know what I'm saying? So no one can really get around that. Okay, so like I said, for these men running their mouths about uh, Negro only and all of this. Like this, this is uh, this is the truth, okay. So, so like I like to say, like the brother said, you can't even call me a liar, like like the brother Tazer Doc said. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so that's that's what it is, okay. So this is uh the American historical record, uh, it's concerning the history and antiquities of America and. Bib uh, bibliography of Americans. Okay, so let's see what they said uh, about the uh, the mesh the meshapi or the the Wampanoag. So it says uh, in page five thirty one. Um, it says Mr. Dwight, one of the committee, asked if so many whites being there did not tend to discourage the Indians from being interested in the meeting. Mr. Marston thought it might, uh, thought it might, uh, here the terms colored persons, blacks, and Indians are synonymous. They all mean, uh, Marsh, uh, Marsha P. Indians, which Mar the Marsha P. is a Wampanoag. Okay, so it says colored persons, blacks, and Indians are synonymous. So I don't I don't even have to get the definition of synonymous. You should already know that means every, basically it's the same thing. Okay, so blacks, Indians, colored person. We just read about uh, Tucker. His 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 uh, I believe his grandmother is said that she was free colored person, but she was yeah it said Indian or partly Indian. Okay. So just showing you. So that was the Meshapi Indians, but like like the Carolina Genesis, that said that those were the New England natives that were being considered dark skinned, uh, and being called more stuff like that. And okay, so uh, and this is on the Pequot. So uh, matter of fact, yeah, this this is about the Pequot. But it says. Uh, Yet after I'm right right here, so it says yet after the Pequot War of 1637, Puritans shipped captive Pequots to bondage in a small Puritan community on the coast of Nicaragua, uh, called Providence Island. There they were called cannibal. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. They it said there they were called cannibal Negroes. So the Pequot was called cannibal Negroes. But yet, Israel, you got people t talking all this about Negro and, you know what I'm saying, and making 
uh, videos in the comment board talking ish. But yet, cannibal Negroes for the Pequot Indians, from people from the Thanksgiving that you men is putting images images of mongoloids and you talking about, uh, you know what I'm saying? And you got a problem with it. Okay, so but it says uh, cannibal Negroes to distinguish them from the natives, the native mis uh, mosquitoes. Okay, so just showing you. So here it is, Pinqua, and I'm and we gonna deal with the pictures and show who the Pinqua were. All right, so uh, okay, so let me show the Narragansett real quick. Matter of fact, let me show. Or no, nah, I'm gonna say the Narragansett last, so I can show that video. Okay, so the uh, point I wanted to get, where is it at? Um, okay, so this is, this, this is also from the book Carolina Genesis. Um, So it says, uh, so this is from Carolina Genesis, all right, and it says, um, it says the name transitioned from Amora to Ginko, and finally, finally to read. This is someone's line, uh, a person's line that they're talking about, uh, re represented a Christianization and elegant, uh, Josiah. Angelizing of the family as part of a Marano, at our Moroccan or American diaspora found among the Esopos, Mectokas, Neantic, the Mohagan. We, because we dealt, we seen the Mohagan, the Pinqua, uh, Machican, uh, Montaquet, and uh, Wampangar Indians. This movement manifests my family's present formally as the American in New York, as well as in New England as a native and tribal conglomerate compelled to expand into the South, specifically South Carolina as free people of color to escape the colonial ethnocide in the North. Okay, so having to be called free people of color okay so i mean i don't know what to tell y'all man hold on so uh okay so this page 81 all right it says herself listed as indian and uh because these are on different pages so it's not uh together but it says I wanted to get the point it says listed as Indian and the two men John uh, Baldwin and Nathan Pendleton uh, Pemberton which matter of fact hold on because uh, that name Larry uh, Larry Pemberton which He's of the Pinkwa. This is Larry Pemberton. Okay, that's a Negro. Okay, he got he got dreads and all. He got locks and all of that. All right. So, but what what are we reading right here? It says Pemberton. So it says listed as Indian and the two men, John Baldwin and Nathan Pemberton. Only Margaret Reed was identified as as an Indian. The other uh, settlers were categorized as colored. Even though they self-identified as Indian and work uh, uh, and were, according to an 1826 petition to the local government adopted by the Stockbridge Indians, okay, so they was classified as categorized as colored, yet they was always the Indian, okay, and and that's crazy how I'm showing you the image of this brother right here. That's name is Pemberton, and we're reading here that a uh, Pemberton. That was uh, he was uh, had to be classified as colored. 
Okay, so um, okay, so this is the, the the last one I wanted to show. Uh, all right, so it says, uh, let me get to the point. So it says the European gardeners residing on Gardner Island in Long Island Sound, uh, New York, early on in the mid 17th century, were assigned as guardians for the Man Hassent Indians uh, of Shelter Island. Shelter Island was called by its indigenous inhabitants Manasset, the birthplace of uh, Cogno de Long Island, uh, Gerherin wrote that in 1824 the Stockbridge Indians formally adopted the mixed blood Indian uh, William Gardner and saw him as a Narragansett. Regardless of his tribal affiliation and self-identity -identi as Indian, two years later the New York uh, legislation defined him as colored. After 1860 and when the Civil War ended, the United States government eradicated the free person of color status, turning any mixed race Indian or non-white individual. So any mix, turning any mixed race Indian or non-white individual into Negro or color because of this legis uh, legislative pressure, the stock bridge tribe by the 1870s expelled the Gardner fam family from its uh, tribal roles by declaring them Negro. The early tribal affiliation with the Gardner family as Stockbridge Narragansett and the family's uh, relationship with Reed and Brooke families who are also uh, officially de declared as Narragansett show that the family was originally Narragansett. Okay, so that family was originally Narragansett. Okay, so okay, so I was on Brethren by Nature, Mar uh, Margaret Newell. So this is what it says. So it says Ruth Wallace Hardnun and Ella Wilcox Sakatu uh, analyze officials' tendency to designate Narragansett Indian people as Negro or black because so the Narragansett Indian people as Negro or black although they locate the shift and the post uh, re revolutionary period okay so the Narragansett Indians was classified basically classified as Negro or black okay so uh, yeah so we, we showed you the Pequod's the Mashapee, which is the the Wampanoag, but we let, let's let's cause you know a lot of people you know they they love the images you know they love uh, you know they they want to see the images y'all y'all want to see the images we you everybody's you know a visual you know visual okay so hold on matter of fact let me get this one more thing on the, the Narragansett okay so. your own religion and your own way of acceptance. In Rhode Island, some citizens who did not own property had to wait until 1928 before they were granted voting rights. But three groups... So this is, this is talking about um, them being able to vote, the Narragansett. So listen to this. Officially barred by state law from casting a ballot. Poppers, the mentally incompetent, and Indians. The only way the Narragansetts could participate in elections was by identifying themselves as African Americans. So, oh my God, man. So here it is. Now, you looking at all these people right here? I know everybody then got an aunt, a uncle, your grandma, your father look like one of these people. Okay, so they was we just read that they was classified the Narragansett people uh classified as Negro or black. Here we're seeing that they couldn't vote unless they called themselves African Americans. Okay, I just I showed you the brother uh Michael 
Well, I, I showed you Pemberton that was Pinqua, but I showed you the other Pinqua that, yeah, either one of those brothers could be class or, or you look at him on the street, you just see he's an African-American, okay, so or, or Negro, okay, so, but here's showing you that they couldn't vote unless they was called uh, African-American. But three groups were officially barred by state law from casting a ballot for African-Americans. Charles Ernest Hazard confronted officials for African-Americans. Charles Ernest Hazard confronted officials who enforced this practice. His brother, Joseph, one of the oldest members of the Narragansett Nation, recalls the moment. Indians couldn't vote, so he went up to the state house and he says, he saw the challenge that the Indians can't vote. And he says, you vote nature? And he says, no. He says, I, I consider myself a Narragansett Indian. If I vote, I'm voting under Negroes could vote, but not an Indian. And he said, I consider myself a Narragansett. Not a black, so I'd like to have that changed. So they did. In nineteen Okay, and, and that's and that and that's how he also with Esau because that's how he can take the land or through because we we were gen it's genocide through the pen basically, okay so uh, because yeah why are you calling yourself black, uh, colored you know all of these things uh, takes you away from the land, okay so you know it's always been a, a, a demise and, and you know having us. Uh, and it's not even just the Narragansett. A lot of other tribes have, uh, you know, classified as Negro, colored, so on and so forth. So, but I just wanted to show that that part. And y'all can watch. This is what it is. Our neighbors, the Narragansett. Um, there, there's a lot more into it because a lot of a lot of the people in the interviews. Matter of fact, bam, it's a Negro. Um, And, you know, the sister in the video. Now, this this guy's, I believe, uh, the brother-in-law, but uh, I don't think he was in there against it. But I'm trying to show y'all real quick. Okay, this brother right here. This brother, look at, look at I was saying this is this Terrence Howard right here. So, uh... Trying to show y'all a few, because I'm about to deal with the images. Do they ever tell us how they act among themselves? And I know they do, because I've been out there. And I know. So y'all can watch that on your own. Um, so I wanted to get to the picture. So anybody know who this is? Uh, what it says, Crispus Addicts. Okay, we, you know, like the Boston Massacre. Cause so when you do research on Christmas addicts, uh, tells you yeah he was a Wampanoag or he was half half Wampanoag. Okay, so uh, but when I looked, I looked, I was looking because y'all y'all can research. I'm not gonna really go into it, but y'all can research yourself. But basically, uh, when you look. I looked and I found this image right here of his mother. Um, and I have to uh, further do research or in, into the image, but this is the image that came up. So this is what she looking like. Wooly hair. Okay. Wampanoag tribe. So like I said, even, even if y'all want to say that, okay, well, yeah, African slaves dealt with and Indians or whatever, natives... These are the Indians, okay. These are, these are what the Indians look like, okay. Already, okay. Like the uh, all them images I showed from the last one, that's what the Indians look like. Now again, you're gonna have a lot that look different from from mixing with the so-called white man, which that's why I'm saying when y'all talk about mixtures and things like that, you would get mixtures of mulattoes looking, yeah, some that could look like past for like a white man. 
so on and so forth. But depending on their line of obviously, but again, it would you would they would look like mulattoes more more so. Not no modern day looking like a Eurasian. Okay, no. So yeah, y'all gotta y'all gotta understand that. But so Christmas addicts, like I said, his mother was a, a Indian. Okay, and this is what uh, is shown. So I'm gonna just slide through some of these these images. So this is uh this is the this is the powwow in Bermuda. Okay, you see she got border of blue fringes, all of that. Okay, but yeah, look look at black black people. Okay, Negroes. Okay, these these this is in uh, Bermuda. Okay, this is uh, uh, Brinky uh, Tucker. Okay, and that, that was his grandson. Okay. So, I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all crazy, man. Teaching, teaching. Y'all got to teach this the right thing, man. So, like I'm showing y'all, these are the people of the Thanksgiving. Okay, so these are the people of Thanksgiving. All right, so Narragansett Indian powwow, which we showed that the Narragansett are the ones that started the um, the word powwow, or that's where the, it comes from. Okay, so and this is the chief Matthew Thomas. All right, but look, look at okay, Narragansett. Okay, this is uh, uh, Bella Nakota. Y'all can't really see the image that good, but uh. Okay, so here, here, here she is. Okay, you can clearly see, obviously, Negroid features. Okay, even though, yeah, she uh, kind of has a little mix to her, but. Okay, so that's, that's her. Okay, Narragansett. Alright, so, um. Okay, and that, this is what I was showing you, Harry M. Johnson Sr. So he and Nar Narragansett, because uh, this is this is from this is from that video. So showing you uh, this brother from uh, that video that that we just that I just showed. This is these are uh, screenshots from that. Okay, so Narragansett, and his name was Harry Johnson. Okay, so Harry Harry Johnson, but you again you look at him on the street because again people don't think uh, uh, the real Indians are of color. So you would just look at him. Oh, he probably white and black. You know that's it. You know, but he a Narragansett Indian. Okay, so uh, yeah, even even because I got this uh, yeah this one sister that had this. But yeah, like I showed, powwows, that's where the Narragansett come from. Okay, and same, same, he kind of looked a little like Forrest Whitaker, you know, with the eye a little bit, but Lloyd uh, Milcox. Okay, so, okay, and this uh, Narragansett, this, uh, this the brother right here. Uh, I'm not sure of his name, but as you see, uh, or actually, yeah, I don't know if that is the same brother, but yeah, this uh, Wampanoag tribe. I wanted to screenshot it with the uh, kind of so y'all could see last Wampanoag. So yeah, again, again, I know y'all got a grandmother that looked like this. All right, so so the, this is Wampanoag. This is uh, her name was Sierra Jackson, I believe, because she was the. Um, I believe they call it a princess or, or whatever of the tribe. Um, yeah, the princess, I believe. So, uh, yeah, but Wamp Wampanoag. Okay. Okay, so these are the people of the Thanksgiving. So when you're doing Thanksgiving lessons, get your facts straight. Okay. So, um, yeah, Wampanoag. Yeah, Masha P. Wampanoag. So, yeah, we, we read the source that blacks, colored, Indians were synonymous for the Master P Indians. Okay, so uh, okay, so this just showing y'all, just showing y'all the people. Okay, showing y'all the people, man. These, these people of Thanksgiving. Okay, our ancestors. Okay, whether, whether like I said, whether you 
because somebody that's watching this, that's you, you an Israelite, you probably from one of these tribes. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, especially if you're on the East Coast. And or if you already know it, maybe brother might not even know he he goes back to the, uh, one of these tribes, but or maybe a brother might know, but and, he, and a brother probably would know know um, that his his people or that that particular tribe went through the Thanksgiving, okay. But like I said, man is showing false images of Mongols that again wasn't part of the Thanksgiving, just equating everything with 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 native peoples but no these are the people okay all right so and i always like this one where where they pretty much show you right right in your face who's the real indian because obviously we know the pilgrims europeans is 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 this so because they could have had had any type of person to play that play the the, the uh play the indian okay because again like i said if they make a damn movie most of the time, a movie will have a damn the white man playing who he is, but they'll have some fake Indian mongoloid playing playing that. Uh, so in this, it's nothing for them to ha had have a so-called mongoloid native or a, a modern-day Hispanic to play the Wampanoag. Okay, but no, they they gave you the truth right in your eyes. Okay, so. Uh, this is from the New Amsterdam, like I was showing you, saying the swarthy natives, okay, as you can see, and the woolly hair, because so, like I was saying, it's not, uh, you know, everything ain't straight hair. These are the same people. They got fringes, because woolly hair, like I said, she got her head covered. Okay, this is tall oak, like we, we went in the other one, and this is uh, Brinky, like I said, in Bermuda. Okay, Wampanoag, same thing in Bermuda. Okay, look at this sister right here. All of it, Wampanoag, Wampanoag. Okay, this is the Pinqua. Okay, so Eastern Pinqua Nation. So yeah, so the Pinqua. So seven hundred men killed. Yeah, these were the people. Okay, so you're not gonna give give that to somebody else. Okay, these were the people. Wampanoags, like I just showed y'all the people. Showed y'all the Narragansett. Okay, these are the people of the Thanksgiving. Okay, this Pinqua. Minus, minus these damn Edomites. And, and here, these are the damn oppressors that uh, uh, killed off us. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so these these are the Pinquas. Okay, more more Pinqua again. Scratch her out. But everybody got family members looking like this. Okay. Here we go. Here here's Pemberton. Again, Pinqua, Pinqua, again. Okay, so this, this is, I mean, it's too easy, man. So, I mean, I thank the Most High for, yeah, enlightening me, getting me to to understand more of the Americas. Okay, because I want to keep these videos going. I want to keep these videos, his, this kind of history, more history about West Africa, uh, Israel, bring out more artifacts. You know, I got I got a lot of uh lessons I want to do in the future, even even some more scriptorial breakdowns, um, you know, but I, I want to keep smashing this, you know, this this whole, the chart, all of that stuff that, because um, again, e even like, even though I don't believe fully in the chart, and I believe some parts of the chart is true, again, the people that are being the face of those tribes are are, are false. Okay, so that that's the thing we gotta smash. But again, here it is, Pinqua again. So yeah, what we read: seven hundred men killed off, women sent into slavery. Okay, look at this. This is a Wampanoag warrior. Clearly, clearly. So I'm trying to think of what actor. He remind me of that. Um, just darker, but. Uh, what's his name? 
Uh, let me see. He was on Martin. Uh, let me see. I forgot his name. Uh, he look. He look. His the facial structure. This dude right here. This guy right here. I forgot his name. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Hawthorne James. Like right. It looked just like him. It looked kind of like him. You know what I'm saying? But he dark. The image is obviously darker. But it looked like him. All right. So this Wampanoag. I had that, had that pick, but uh, okay. And this is another Wampanoag uh, painting, dark skin. I mean, in King Philip's War, descendant, descendant surname Mitchell. Okay, so yeah, a lot of Negroes with the last name Mitchell. Okay, so this is the Nimmuk, uh that I was showing y'all. Look at the women. Okay. Nimmuk tribe. So, I mean, look at this. Okay, so I showed Narragansett, Nimmuk, Pinqua, I mean, Wampanoag. I mean, what more do men want to see? Okay, so, um, okay. Okay, and, and this brother right here, Morgan James Peters. A uh, member of Masha P. Wampanoag tribe. So, what do we read again? Everything Negro or it's a lot blacks, colored, Indian, all synonymous with the Masha P. Uh, Indians. Okay, which is the Wampanoag. Alright, so just showing you, I showed y'all all the images. So, y'all will know who was involved in, in the Thanksgiving. Alright, so I want to close this out with some scriptures. Okay, so I just wanted to close it out. Okay, this is Amos <coughs> 5. And let me get to the point, uh, verse 21. It says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell your solemn assemblies. Because so the most I, especially like a day, <coughs> like, Thanksgiving and all these other days where yeah, uh, people eating all on type of clean, unclean foods. But again, it's a feast that's not been called by the Mosai. Okay, it says, "Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me thy noise of thy songs." For I will not hear the melody of thy uh, vow, vows. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. So, because uh, Israel, because at, at a time, yeah, we was, you know, we we would be going off and we would just constantly do these things like the sacrifices to the point where the Most High is like tired of it. You know, even, even the, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even also him saying take away these Because even, you know, translating that to now, yeah, the damn choir, you know, got homosexuals in it, you know, talking about they love the Lord. But in, in the, the the law, it tells homosexual supposed to be put to death. So most I take away that saying, take away that, uh, take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. Okay. And what's important let let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. So, uh, uh, again, the Most High despises these these false feast days. Okay, all right. So uh, let's get Jeremiah ten. Okay, because we're gonna be bringing this out a lot next month. But just uh, getting to the point, it says, "Hear ye the word of the Most High." Uh, Here. Hear ye the word which the Most High speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Most High, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay, and one and one of my uh, one of the uh, sites that I was bringing out, I, I actually got the wrong one, um, or not not I didn't get the wrong one, but it was one that I didn't use. Talked about how. 
uh, most matter of fact, let me see if I can find it. Basically, was saying that uh, a lot of the origins of these. Um, let me see. A lot of the origins of these days uh, are like even Christmas. Let me see. Um, okay, here it is. It said uh, just real quick. It says the holiday continued as a tradition in New England. However, celebrated not with a feast and family, but rather with row rowdy drunken men who went door to door begging, begging for treats. That's how many of the original American holidays were celebrated. Christmas, New Year's Eve and Day, Washington's birthday, the 4th of July. All right, so just showing you, again, that's how all these these uh, holidays tradition of men. Okay, so we're, we're not to learn the way of the heathen, okay, especially them so-called white men. All right, so this is Micah 2 and 2. And it says, woe, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hands. So this is the yeah, Illuminati because, you know, they all all them secret society, all of that, the meetings, and then they act out everything. Okay. Especially how to get us, uh, the children of Israel, away from our God. Okay. But going to thanksgiving the the, the damn pilgrims the puritans um you know devising a plan to destroy us likewise even the spaniards the portuguese all of them have have devised a, a, a you know a plan to destroy indigenous people okay so um but it says and they convey fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away so they oppress a man and his house, even a man in his heritage. Okay, and the biggest heritage they have have oppressed us and took us from is our our heritage as being Israelites. Okay, these damn fake Jews taking our heritage. Okay, but going into uh, thanks thanks killing, taking this land, taking you know uh, you know, and killing us by violence and stuff like that. Okay, so um, you know, so that's that's what it is. Okay, and if anything, if anything, people on Thanksgiving, you know, from from this year or from next year, this is your spirit. It should be. This is Ecclesiastes seven and seven. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Okay, so oppression maketh a wise because we still oppressed. In America, all right, and you know the oppression faced to indigenous people for this is is proof that you know again we're still oppressed. So y'all love oh Thanksgiving we we gonna get together. You should be mad, okay? That of this and, and I showed you who the people involved were. So you you we can't be thinking oh everything is oh for especially for negroes that they just came from africa no we was already here okay whether you're not one from one of those tribes most likely y'all from uh you know we're from you know unless you do your your research or whatever your family line even though at the end of the day we are israel but just like a brother that's from West Africa, he's from Nigeria, and he knows he's Igbo. He can research into Igbo and, and find out more about them uh, being Israelites. So likewise, if you're a Cherokee, you can go and show, obviously, because the people that are claiming to be Cherokee aren't the real ones. But it's the people that they classified as freemen. So if you, from that line, you can, because I, I got a lot of stuff on Cherokees being I Israelite. So, um, you know. So, uh, so you can understand, but, um, you know, so whether you're not from those tribes I named earlier, the Wampanoag, Pinqua, Narragansett, still, those are our people, okay, because we're the nation of Israel, all right, so you should, you should be mad about that, okay, so, um, I just wanted to bring those scriptures out, okay, and, uh, you know, I hope brothers and sisters was edified, like I said, hit me up. On the comment board. So, Salaki. So, um, yeah. So, I was saying that you can hit me up on the comment board or on Instagram. 
So I hope brothers and sisters was edified, like I said. Until the next time, shalom.